Hi everyone, I'm Gareth Spence and welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I'm currently in London at the Connected Britain event where I'm talking to AdTrans' Ronan Kelly about the state of connectivity in the UK and how the company is helping to drive networking forward. Ronan, thanks for joining me. Starting at a very high level, how would you describe the state of the UK's connectivity at the moment? It's in a state of flux at the moment. As you know, the whole of the UK is transitioning over from the legacy copper infrastructure, whether that's Twisted Pair or Coax, that served it you know, for the last 100 years or so. It's transitioning on large over to full fiber, which is fantastic. There's a massive amount of operators now that have secured billions in funding that are building out in parallel. To that extent, we're now seeing, if I look at what Adtran did for the market there over the last 12 months, over the last 12 months we've shipped enough OLT capacity to service over 5 million households into the UK just in that 12 month period alone. We've seen the homes passed run rate now across all the operators hit 6 million homes passed per, uh, per annum now at this point. And I think that's going to largely represent the run rate as we go forward. So where people had the targets in the UK of getting everybody on full fiber by 2025, and a lot of people were looking at that going, that's never going to happen. They're not actually going to be too far off the mark with that, so it's quite encouraging. Yeah, you spoke about this transformation that's currently happening. What are the main hurdles to really pushing it forward and making it a success? To be quite honest with you, most of the operators have their machines up and running now that they're building out at a good pace. I think the big challenge that we face as an industry now is consumer adoption. And I think there's a lot can be done both on the operator side, but I think also the government has a lot to do there as well. There was a lobby towards the Advertising Standards Authority here in the UK there a couple of years back with regard to the use of the word fiber for advertising broadband services that were not full fiber. And that, you know, the assertion was that that was creating a lot of confusion within the marketplace. Unfortunately, the ASA declined to put in place regulation that would deal with that. I really think they need to revisit that now. We've seen that in other markets where the, the, the respective ASAs and the other markets have prohibited the use of the word of the the use of the word full fiber in you know, copper-based broadband services, and the net impact of that is the awareness of the benefits of fiber infrastructure has increased across the consumer base, and with that, the adoption of the services has also increased. And that's the key thing now. If we look at the marketplace today, the investors are no longer interested in the home's past vanity metric. They all know the operators know how to build a network at this point. It's now, can they sell the network? That's all that matters. You mentioned the government there, and they seem to be very vocal in the past about building you know, a gigabit nation. How active are they at the moment? To be fair, hats off to Ofcom in particular. They've put in place a set of legislation that has created a foundation where investors can invest with confidence. And we've seen that with the hundreds of billions of pounds that have been made available across the Altnet community and also to you know, the bigger operators as well to invest in their fiber infrastructure. So you know, to me, credit goes to Ofcom for you know, putting in place the foundation for all of this to happen. But like I say, there's more that they need to be focusing on, on driving the consumers towards taking the services. It's not going to be good for anybody if the whole industry builds out full fiber connectivity to every household in the UK, and we only get 20 or 30% of households taking services on that. We need to drive awareness, we need to put in place incentives for consumers to adopt these greener, more efficient solutions. You know, as part of a government's um, environmental campaign, they need to be supporting the industry as it makes a transition from an infrastructure that consumed you know, 10, 20 times more the power of a fiber-based infrastructure, the government needs to get behind that and encourage people to adopt those types of services. Yeah. You already mentioned your OLTs, but Antran has a very broad range of products that are proving hugely successful in the industry and on the, the booth behind us Absolutely. here. What is it that makes Adtran's products stand out? If I was to, to drill it down to a single word, it would be openness. So as a company, we've employed an ethos across the portfolio to make sure whether it's the, the, the Wi-Fi gateway within your home through the ONT, right through to the OLT in the central office, to make sure that we're delivering an open architecture end to end. And that gives the operators deploying our solutions control over their destiny. That you know, if they want to employ a third party software in the future, if they want to introduce a new hardware vendor in the future, they're not locked into Adtran. And some might look at that as a naive strategy by Adtran, but our goal is to make sure that the only form of lock-in that our customers face is the lock-in of customer satisfaction. They stay with us because they want to stay with us, not because they have to. Okay, and another hot topic in the industry at the moment is the merger between Adtran and Adver. Mm -hmm. How is that developing? 
it's going really, really well. So we got all the approvals needed from the government to get the, the deal across the line. We're in the process now of bringing all the teams together and driving awareness across the teams of the broader portfolio. Everybody's trying to learn the respective marketplaces and how each dovetails into the other as well. And we're seeing fantastic opportunities emerge from that. The customer base is really, really excited about it because what we see, particularly here in the UK, an awful lot of our customers that have been busy rolling out fiber access networks over the last couple of years, initially for the backhaul, they hadn't necessarily leaned towards WDM technology for their backhaul because they didn't need it in the beginning. But now as the traffic levels are growing on their networks, they now have to implement more capacity. And all of a sudden we've arrived just at the right time to say, do you know what? We've got just the right answer for that. We've the whole portfolio from Adva. So really, really good. Similarly with the synchronization solutions from Adva, a lot of our customers have always eyed up the, 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 the cell densification that's going to come with 5G and they wanted to have a role to play within that. So having that capability across the network as well is going to give them relevance within that marketplace. So this combined company with its combined portfolio is going to have a big impact on, on the UK networking industry moving forward? Without question. Ronan, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate the updates. My pleasure, Gareth.